Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, the Avid Tent Camper, and today I want to talk about important features to consider before purchasing a camp hatchet. Recent camping books do not discuss important features of hatchets that you should consider before buying them, but a few recent bushcraft YouTube videos do cite sharpness out of the box and handle grain orientation as uh, what they consider to be uh, the two most important features of a hatchet that you ought to consider before buying one. I would not agree with that and so let me explain why. Out of the box sharpness is a relatively unimportant feature because razor sharp hatchets are very dangerous in the hands of people who are unaccustomed to handling them. Furthermore, anyone can easily sharpen a hatchet to suit his or her expectations. Handle grain orientation is another less important feature because handles with poor grain orientation perform modern tent camping chores just as well as those with good grain orientation. Over my lifetime, I have used many hatchets and axes with poor grain orientation and never had a handle to suddenly break. Furthermore, I know of no objective studies concluding that hatchets with poor grain orientation are more dangerous than those with good grain orientation. In fact, my favorite camp hatchet is a vintage Collins head with a replacement handle that has poor grain orientation. But it is a great splitting tool and wood chip cutter. Now let me tell you about the features that I think are most important. Price is the first important feature to consider. Hatchets suited for modern tent camping chores range from about $10 to almost $200. For example, Coleman, Coogan's, Stansport, and other hatchets, such as those in this photo, can be found in most department and sporting goods stores for less than $20. These hatchets can split a few pieces of firewood, but are tiring to use and are poorly designed for cutting wood chips and small limbs. At the high end of the price range, Gransfer's Brook hatchets and forest axes can be found in a few specialty stores such as the Smoky Mountain Knife Works in Sevierville, Tennessee and they can be found on various internet retailers for about $150. Between these two extremes, reasonably good quality hatchets can be found in hardware stores, forestry supply stores, outdoor outfitters, and internet retailers. I especially like vintage American and Swedish hatchets that can be found in antique shops flea markets, and eBay for about $40. Although they may require a little restoration work, they make great camp hatchets. Handle material is a second important feature to consider. Hatchet handles are made from cast steel, fiberglass, ash, or hickory. The East Wing Sportsman Axe shown in this photo, is a popular steel shafted hatchet that has a distinctive leather washer grip. Fiskers and Gerber make popular fiberglass handled hatchets. Most experienced woodsmen prefer hatchets and axes with hickory handles. Although these handles are subject to breakage, they typically give better balance to the hatchet and have good quality heads with sharper bits 
that cut deeper with each swing. Handle length is the third important factor to consider before buying a, an axe. Axe handles range in length from about 9 inches to 36 inches. Axes with shorter 9 to 11 inch handles are usually called pack axes because they are easy to pack into backpacks. But these short handle axes are less efficient and more dangerous than hatchets with longer handles. At the other end of the handle length continuum, axes with 30 to 36 inch handles are usually called felling axes. They are considered to be safer and more efficient than shorter handle axes, but are more difficult to pack. Axes with 20 to 29 inch handles are usually called forest axes or boys axes. They offer a good balance of cutting efficiency and safety, but still are difficult to pack. Axes with 12 to 19 inch handles are usually called hatchets. They are ideal for modern tent camping chores because they are small enough to pack in most tool bags, but long enough to perform modern tent camping chores, such as splitting firewood and cutting wood chips. In particular, I prefer hatchets with 13 to 14 inch handles. Bit hardness is the fourth important factor to consider when buying a hatchet. When buying good quality hatchets, the product descriptions will usually specify the bit hardness as a number on the Rockwell scale ranging from 45 to 60. This range is ideal because softer steel edges with Rockwell values below 45 will curl after brief use, while harder steel edges with Rockwell values above 60 will frequently chip. But many hatchets are sold with no information about their hardness. For example, cheap hatchets sold in department and sporting goods stores rarely specify bit hardness, nor do hatchets sold in flea markets and on eBay. Here are some tips for assessing the hardness of a bit. You can soak the head in vinegar for two days and look for the Hammond line between the hardened bit and the softer cheek. The hardened bit should be a dark gray color and smoother than the rest of the head. Other axes stamped with hand forged or drop forged usually have good hardness because they were probably made by experienced blacksmiths. If you buy a used axe from another person, ask if he or she ever used a grinder to reprofile, sharpen, or polish the head, or if he or she ever burnt out an old broken handle because overheating can draw out the temper and hardness of the steel. The head profile or pattern is the fifth important factor to consider before purchasing a hatchet. But before describing head profiles, let me define the overstrike zone of a handle. It is the area between the bottom of the eye and the bottom of the heel or lower tip of the bit. This area of the handle is most vulnerable to overstrike damage because modern tent campers typically split a lot of firewood and each time the bit passes through a log, the end of the log can strike and damage the overstrike zone. Unless protected, repeated damage to the overstrike zone will eventually damage the handle to the point that it must be replaced. Most camp hatchet heads fall into one of six profile categories. 
Hatchets with either a Michigan head pattern shown in the center of this photo or a Dayton head pattern shown on the left in this photo seem to be best suited for modern tent camping chores because they have relatively small overstrike zones. Hatchets with a Hudson Bay head pattern shown on the right in this photo, Rockaway head patterns, and modern Scandinavian head patterns, on the other hand, are poorly suited for modern tent camping chores because they have relatively large overstrike zones. Tomahawk patterns, preferred by some bushcraft enthusiasts, seems to be poorly suited for firewood splitting. Michigan and Dayton camp hatchet heads are generally about five inches long and have a three or three and a quarter inch bit. Head weight is the sixth factor that should be considered when purchasing a hatchet. Camp hatchet heads range in weight from about one to two pounds. The Norland hatchet in the lower left corner of this picture has a head that weighs a little less than one pound. The Dunlop hatchet in the lower right corner of this picture has a head that weighs about one and a quarter pounds. This size is frequently called a scout hatchet. The Collins hatchet at the top of this photo has a head that weighs one and three quarter pounds. I prefer the heavier hatchet heads because they cut chips and split wood more efficiently than lighter hatchets, but they are more dangerous. Head geometry is the seventh and last important feature to consider when buying a hatchet. Most hatchet heads are forged, cast, or ground with a four to five inch concave curvature that extends from the pole down to the bit. This long concave curvature removes excess metal to reduce the weight of the head and helps to improve cutting efficiency. Then the bit is usually widened to about three to about three sixteenths of an inch or more and then beveled again to produce a sharp edge. The widened bit helps to strengthen the edge. I prefer a wedge-shaped head that has less concave curvature and a thinner bit, despite the fact that the thinner bit can easily chip. A caliper can be used to accurately measure the thickness of a bit. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video on hatchet features, and I hope that you'll share it with your friends on social media. For more information about important hatchet features, you can visit my website, www.basictentcamping.com, and read my recent book entitled Basic Tent Camping. Other good resources that discuss hatchet features are Camping and Woodcraft by Horace Kephart, published in 1917, The Axe Book, published by D. Cook in 1981, and Bushcraft, published by Morris Kohansky in 1987. Remember, take more trips, travel further, visit more attractions, and save money. Go tent camping.